All right, so thanks for coming today. My name is Craig, I'm from Zaloni. Here to talk about the data lake. Um, but before I begin, this month I turned uh, 40 years old, right? So I've been in a, a mode of reflection of, of my time on this planet. And I'm a geek, of course, so I think a lot about technology during my lifetime. Um, so it turns out, about five years before I was born, a data revolution was underway. Like in 1970, Dr. Codd laid the groundwork for the relational database model. This is from 1974. Does anybody know the magazine this is from? Could win a free t-shirt? Anyone? Anyone? What magazine? 1974. You said what? Mad Magazine, that's correct. Congratulations. So, in 1970, the relational database model was kind of laid out by Dr. Codd and started to take shape in my lifetime and would impact my whole career, really. I've been programming 22 years and the database was always central to it. Every job or project I started on, there was a database. Now, let's forget about the data and the application, but let's talk about what the database actually brought in terms of human aspects. All right, the database brought a way for people to communicate and share ideas, share knowledge and intelligence about a system and how it interacts. If you had to interact, if your system had to talk to another system, chances are you'd ask, well, let me see the data model or let me, be able, let me put, peek in those tables. So this we can think of as data democratization, right? Before that, you know, they'd been wrangling with data for nearly 100 years, I think starting in the late 1800s, one of the big uh, uh, census uh, efforts. It took, I think, months to crunch the numbers. Uh, so crunching numbers mechanically, algorithmically, algorithmically has, has always been there, but really the database gave this uh, framework whereby people could really be professionals in the IT industry. What's that? Um, so the profession really took off, I think, in the 1970s, 80s, and so forth. There's another uh, set of the cartoons from that Mad Magazine. But I don't, I don't know if you saw the caption on the previous one, but let me go back. You know, when we when people talk about big data and big data problems, it seems like the same problem scenario is, is mentioned, you know, 40 years later. But now here we are today, 2015, 10 years into Hadoop, and uh, we're at the uh, middle or beginning of a whole new data revolution, data democratization 2.0, big data. So previously we had constraints that the database gave us. We had a very limited set of capabilities, selects, inserts, and some basic functions and capabilities. In this data democratization 2.0, things are flipped around. The constraints on data are no longer there, structured, unstructured, who cares? Tons of data, who cares? Images, video, audio, telemetry, no worries. The data lake will consume it. Uh, but we're kind of uh, flipped on, on the side of, uh, uh, of capabilities. So instead of just selects, inserts, pulling data in, and BCP, this and that, now the c capabilities are just out of control. I mean, you walk through these booths, um, you can do so much with so many different tools. If you think about the Hadoop ecosystem, Spark, you know, and going back years with Pig and Hive, the options are limitless. But this data democratization 2.0 presents a challenge uh, for the IT profession. Before we had this kind of limited set of language that humans could interact on, sh share ideas, understand systems. Now, with the big data world, it's really our responsibility to have an architecture that gives us that same set of uh, features on a human level. So of course we know the, uh, oh, I skipped that one, sorry about that. 
and we know the benefits of big data. We, everybody talks about it in the, uh, in, in the keynotes, and uh, all, all, everyone here has examples of what you can do with big data. You know, the better customer experiences, better outcomes, better everything. Um, big data is changing lives, right? And even the, big, the phrase big data is kind of uh, a misnomer. Like big data, it sounds like a, a marketing term drummed up by Donald Trump. You know, big data, fabulous data. It's the most exclusive data. But uh, really, there's more to this data lag than big data, right? It's about parallel processing capabilities. It's a spark in the machine learning. Uh, over the last couple of years, we're seeing that come into the general user's hands. Like, I, I'm not a data scientist, PhD, but even I can go out there and play with Spark and, and use the uh, machine learning libraries. Uh, the data leg, of course, um, you know, breaks down the silos of the traditional EDW. Uh, what we see at Zaloni is when people are coming into the data lake, you know, that's usually the first step is kind of bringing in these sort of workflows. Uh, but they're still not necessarily realizing the potential of it. And this is why I went back in history a bit, is because when we think about big data and the tools we're using now, in big enterprises, uh, what is the stuff going to look like in 5, 10, 15 years? Uh, I think like fewer than 20% of the attendees in last year's conference uh, worked for companies with more than like 50,000 employees. How, how many people here work for a company with more than 50,000 employees? All right, so all right, so that's good. About 50%, so that's good. So you know complexity of IT systems in a large company can be huge. I mean, small undertakings for revamping a part of a system can take years when it's really just a small like set of code or features that you need to revamp. So what do you need to worry about now with this data lake concept? A lot of these things here. So this is not the database world. So those concerns that the database kind of took care of for you uh, from a technical standpoint, uh, you have to worry about. But more importantly, I go back to the human aspect. When humans communicate, when a new developer comes on, uh, five years down the line when somebody has to make a change to this system, how does the human know and gain intelligence about the system and the components and the flow. So these are some of the things that Zaloni has found through our working with you know, customers across the industries are important aspects for your data lake. Ooh, two minutes. And we have a product called Bedrock that addresses this. As we learn lessons, as we see the pains in the industry, we fold them into our product. So you get all these aspects Starting off with manage ingestion, metadata, data quality, data inventory. This makes sure that, first of all, you know what's coming in, when it comes in, what workloads are run on this thing, and what the structure, if there is structure, is. So you get that information radiator that is otherwise lacking in this Hadoop ecosystem. Here's an example of bedrock in a uh, healthcare setting. So we've had healthcare use cases. We've worked with automotive, financial, uh, retailer, analytics companies. Your inbound flow needs intelligence so that you know what you're capturing, what the structure is. You need auto detection. You need lineage. These are things that we've learned over the years and we have in our product. And we also have a new product that we announced uh, yesterday called MICA that goes beyond the uh, sort of the operational and developer level and, and starts to talk to the business and data science community so they can start to look at the data, apply rules, apply transformations, and work across different clusters. So Zaloni, we, uh, we take a distribution uh, agnostic approach. So our product works, uh, Bedrock works across all the distributions. And I think I'm up with time. So before I, I have one last question. 
Dr. Cod attended what great university and achieved his PhD? No. 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 I will say, uh, let's see, what's a good way to give, give a hint? What? No, I'll say it's in the Midwest. It's kind of northern, northerly. What's that? No, no. Go a little bit east. A little bit east. I'll give a, a hint. What? What did you say? All right. Congratulations. And that's my alma mater as well. Sorry about that. Oh, yeah. If you said it earlier, I'm sorry. You can hold me down later for another shirt. But thank you much for uh, your time.